Okay, so I think we are live. So good morning, everyone. As many of you know, my name is Dylan. Uh, I am one of the product developers and customer service assistants for uh, Scare Model Scenery. And today, I'll show you this. We'll, I'll be doing a live stream of the LX368 local maintenance platform. Hopefully you can all see and hear me. If not, please let me know. I can currently read comments from uh, Facebook and YouTube and I will do my best to answer all of them. So I suppose without further ado, let's get into it. So if you can still hear me, um, if you can't, please do let me know. Um, and there is also a bit of delay in the camera. So hopefully we get through this okay. So this is one of our latest kits. Um, we released it, I think just before Christmas, if memory serves me right. And it basically builds one of these, which, as you can see, is quite a nifty little platform, which is perfect for inside of your uh, TMDs, bus depots, anywhere really where you'll be needing to do maintenance on vehicles. Um, not sure how high it stands exactly, I should, probably should have found that after the stream, at the start of the stream, sorry, but I think it's about 22 millimeters tall. There is options for longer legs as well, if you'd wish, I'll show you them in a bit. Uh, you get a choice of uh, texture sheets for the top as well. Some are pre-weathered and different textures. Uh, you get some nice laser engraved stairs for the end as well. And yeah, I'll just uh, jump into the kit and we'll show you what we get. Who have we got in the chat? We've got uh, Sam Jones, uh, we've got Barry Turner, Lee, uh, John Slade. Oh, I've got loads of you. How many are you watching? 175, which is brilliant. More than merry chaps. I've got to get the text sheet. So I'll just get that out to show you exactly what we got. I have already started the kit. The stairs do take a while. Um, they're a bit tedious, so I thought I'll get ahead of myself on one of them and just pre-do one. Um, so we're not faffing around. I'll show you what it looks like at the moment. I'll show you some more detail later when we come to build it later on. This is half a staircase. At the top is laser engraved tread plate, which I think is a really nice feature of this kit. Hopefully that's focusing. Brilliant. Okay, so in the kit, you get a uh, two mil MDF main part. So this is your top piece. You've got in a variety of legs as well. You've got, as you can see, short and long, or short and long. Uh, the short legs are for if you are laying it over the ground um so if it's on track heights um but the longer legs are for if you've got layouts sort of similar like tinsley uh, where the um the legs actually sit in a big well so you can get under the locomotives or buses or whatever to uh service them so if you've got a layout like tinsley you use long legs and if you're just sitting on track heights like most of i imagine most people will then you use the shorter ones so we'll just get into the next piece. We've got some wires, uh, one mil and 0.5 mil wires. As you can see, there's some holes pre-cut into the legs. And you just thread those wires through and that gives you a look like that. I do hope you can see it's okay. I think there's a bit of delay. It's quite annoying sometimes uh, to know where I'm at with the delay. That just gives an extra feature, and then you've got a top piece as well, which I believe is a 0.4 mil laser board. Uh, so you've got some leg strengtheners, and you've got a clean top piece to uh, put over the uh, MDF top piece, which just gives it a bit of a cleaner look. Should you wish to paint it, okay? So let's get into it. Oh, you've also got the instructions, I've got to point out, uh, which gives you a nice clear run through of how to build the kit, and you also get three texture wraps for the top as you can see in varying degrees of uh, weatheredness. I personally like the mucky ones, but some of you might prefer the clean ones, or you might even prefer to paint it. If you were going to paint it, you'd use either this or your own piece of card at the top. Okay, so let's get into it. I forget which parts I need. So we'll start off with the uh, two mil MDF pieces. Quite a lot of you in the stream, and wow, 211 people watching. Who have we got? We've got uh, Jonathan Hall, uh, Rod Hart, uh, Adrian Hayes. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Hope everyone's doing okay in lockdown. Hopefully, the snow's not too, uh, too much of an issue for everyone. 
Uh, luckily in Doncaster, we seem to have escaped most of it. Um, if anyone's got any questions, please feel free to do, uh, do feel free to ask, and I'll uh, do my best to help everyone. Uh, if not, I'll uh, type my email in the chat later on, or the works email, and you can always ask them there if you prefer. Um, but yeah, at the moment, I'm just releasing some of the parts with a nice clean knife. So as you can see there, we've got the top piece released and done. I'm just going to clean up it because it isn't normally. I will uh, file the edges down a bit just to get a better cleaner finish because as you can see when you cut it you do get a little bit of material left there and I would just like to file that down but I am uh, bunkering down at my girlfriend's house during lockdown so I haven't bought those remodeling equipment with me unfortunately but if you have the option to I would suggest filing it down a bit just to give it a, give it a more cleaner finish and cleaner look now this may take me a while, unfortunately, just to release all the parts, because they are in there quite well. Um, I think I added too many nodes on these, to be honest. Probably a bit too secure. But if anyone's got any questions, please feel, do feel free to ask. I can currently see questions coming from uh, our Facebook pages, and I can see questions from YouTube. I don't think I can see questions from our Facebook group, uh, some Probably something to do with privacy of that. But, uh, if you've got any questions, please do feel free to ask them. The only question is uh, when we're doing it in N-Scale at the moment from Chris Dodd. Um, I believe this is when we can do an N-Scale. Um, a lot of the time when people ask can you do an N-Scale, the answer is usually it depends on the material. Um, so obviously N-Scale is twice, it's sorry, half the size of double O gauge. And therefore we can't just ha half the size of the kit, we also have to half the size of the materials that we use. So if we don't physically have any material which is half the size and obviously we can't do it but I believe with this one we can actually do it in N-Gage uh, but as always as a question of time uh, we've got Tim in the chat now good morning Tim hope you're doing all right nearly done now just releasing the last few of the legs some of them do pop out quite easily just need a bit of encouragement with the knife I do recommend as well that if you are painting this up for your layout, that you uh, prime everything before you paint it, uh, just to give it an extra layer of protection. Since it is MDF, it is wood, and wood, wood, sorry, is absorbent. So if you're using acrylic paint or something with uh, a wooden kit and you don't prime it or you use too much acrylic paint, well, you can actually saturate the kit, and which will uh, cause it to uh, sort of expand and swell up, and can cause it to uh, well, become ruined unfortunately, uh, which isn't what we want. So I do recommend if you're using paint to paint your model, uh, just give it a quick coat of prime beforehand. Uh, let's have a look at the questions now. Uh, no, no snow in London, which is great to hear. Uh, da -da -da. Download kits. Uh, yeah, so I suppose we can do it as a download kit. Um, I can't see why. Why not? I'll uh, speak to Ian and see if he can do that. But, okay, so we've released all of the uh, legs now. Let's try and show them up close there. So you can see we've got, uh, how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, and eight holes at the top. Uh, you've got three large ones, sorry, seven holes, three large holes and four small. Uh, the large ones are one mil and the uh, small ones are 0.5 mil. Um, now they're used to threading wires through at the end, uh, which gives it an extra added depth to the look of the kit. Let's have a look at the quick chat. How long is the platform please? Good question. Just give us one second. Okay, so it is about 274 millimeters long and in inches that is just under 11 inches long. So it's just under 30 centimeters. So which is long enough to uh, quite easily accommodate uh, class 37 or class 47 or multiple smaller locos in a TMD or quite a number of buses as well. Okay, so glue I'm going to be using today is uh, Deluxe Material Superfatic. It's currently my one of my glues of choice. I prefer this over the uh, card glue that we also sell uh, simply because it, um, the time it takes to go off uh, is a bit better. I think it's a bit quicker to go off. Uh, it doesn't mean you have less playtime with it, but it does mean that it's um, you spend less time waiting for glues and more time actually building kits, which is what we like. 
Okay, so hopefully you can see this. What I've done is added beaded glue over the holes. I'm just going to slide in the first leg. Now, unfortunately, since uh, the legs only have one strut, as you can see, the piece isn't that stable until you put the uh, the uh, stairs on. Um, so I would recommend if you do install this permanently, either glue it down with some strong glue or uh, you uh, create a base for it, which should give it much more strength. So this doesn't take long to go up at all, um, which is one of the reasons why I really like it. So have a move the questions. Uh, yep, the length of the steps, I would, so I've already got one I've pre-built. I'll just measure that for you. The grand total length, including steps, comes to 330 centimeters. Oh, sorry, 330 millimeters, which is just under 13 inches. So I hope that helps. Uh, let's see if we've got any more questions. Will the MDF warp it in a loft or garage? Um, probably not. Um, obviously, that depends on how good your uh, insulation is in your garage and what the temperature variation is like. But I would say there's no harm whatsoever in giving it a quick coat of primer after you've built it. That will just help protect it, that will help seal everything in and it will also prevent warping, or at least try to prevent warping. Uh, add glue to the support posts. Uh, I'm currently adding the glue to the, uh, the bottom of the platform and then adding the support posts in place. But if you wanted to do it that way around you can, this is just personal preference, also makes it easier for you to see on the video. Having a look now at the questions, we've got 200, nearly 250 people watching. Wow, you're out in force today. Unfortunately, this might not be the most entertaining thing to watch, but I will try and keep it as entertaining as possible. Oops, I didn't want to go in. There we go. Of course, in the real world, uh, with these platforms, we looked at lots of reference photos from uh, Tinsley. So a uh, big shout out to uh, Dave Gilmore there for helping us with that. Um, but on the underside of the platforms in the real world, you had things like uh, lots of fluorescent light tubes. And that one didn't want to go in. Uh, lots of fluorescent light tubes, um, cable conduits, uh, gas uh, taps for gas ions, things like that. Um, so one thing we really do like about this kit is the holes that are in the uh, leg support. So you can actually use them to thread real wire. Uh, if you use it to thread real wire, then you can use them to support the uh, uh, the lights that you choose to put underneath. And of course, that means you're actually using the wire holes as they actually were intended to, which I think is a really nice feature of the kit. Where he says it's like watching glue dry, and unfortunately at this moment it is actually like watching glue dry. But hopefully, once this is done, I'll be able to show you some more parts of the kit, and then we can get going. It's just a very time-consuming stage, this, unfortunately. Okay, so I'll not move it about that much because the glue is still going off a bit. But as you can see. It's looking like a platform now, albeit an Australian one, because it's upside down. And in true IKEA fashion, you do get a spare piece. Okay, so I suppose the next uh, part we need to look at is the top piece. So I'm just going to release uh, this, I think, I believe it's 0.4mm uh, laser board. I'm going to glue that over the top. And, and all that does, as you can see, it will hide the uh, slot and tabs on top of the platform just give it a nicer cleaner finish and make it more appealing to the eye so i'll just release this now and then we'll put it on top so if you've got any questions please do feel free to ask and i'll do my best to help and uh, read any questions out and of course, if you've got any questions about what we're doing at the moment at Scale Model Scenery, what uh, new kits we might have coming in the future, please do ask. Or if you've got any suggestions, please feel free to uh, put them down in the chat. 
or if you've got any questions about what I model normally, or any other team members, what we're doing, you know, I'll be better to ask and help. Uh, can you also extend the set? Uh, yes, you can extend the set, and um, it's not something we uh, particularly cater for, unfortunately, with this kit. Um, but there's no reason for you not to be able to, because of course you can just. Uh, you have two little slots there, which is where the steps go into. If you can really see that, there you go. You've got two little slots there for the steps to go. One at two at either end. But of course, you can just extend by another platform kit and put the steps at either end. And of course, don't forget when you put this top piece over the top, that will actually uh, should hide the step slots you got there. Okay, so just nearly releasing this piece now. It's only 0.4, so it doesn't take that much cutting through. There we go. Oops. So, nice asking if we can do an engage. It is one we can do an engage, um, it's just a case of finding the time to, uh, to scale it down. And then release it in the range, but uh, we should be able to do it. I will uh, try and see if we can get that done sooner rather than later as well. So I reckon that'd be quite nice to engage. Unfortunately, we do seem to uh, prefer modelling for the double O, unfortunately. Okay, so that's the top piece, all good and ready. I'm not going to glue this piece onto the end actually, because I think it should. Uh, end of the stairs. So let's move on to the stairs quickly. The stairs are a bit time consuming unfortunately. I've already started them to try and speed this uh, video up a bit. Um, but unfortunately they are a bit fiddly. Um, they do take time, they do take patience and they are one of those kits or parts of the kits where if you rush it you do risk everything just falling apart on you. Which is quite annoying and it's not very entertaining for the live stream. But We'll give it a go. So I've already tried to half build one to see how that goes. Let's try and speed things up a bit. It should be okay. Have you thought about doing a kit with open mesh rather than solid platform? Yes, we have. Um, when I first designed this kit, I did actually intend to have a couple of options for this. So you could choose whether to have it as a solid top like we've got here, or a uh, Press plate top, mesh top. Um, but unfortunately, this one just took a priority. Um, so the mesh top didn't quite get released on time. And this track still hasn't been released, but it is in the pipe work, it is being worked on uh, out of most things. So it's just a case of time. So now I'm just releasing the uh, press plate steps. Oh, these are lovely because they've got a laser engraved tread place on the top, and I think that adds a real nice depth to the kit. Rather than just being flat and solid, you've actually got some texture into it. Okay, nearly there. So we've got 233 people watching, which is absolutely amazing. So thank you to everyone for spending some time with us today. Um, I do apologise that this might not be the most exciting of videos, but I will try my best. Okay, so when you uh, construct the platform, you've actually got some strengtheners, which just give it a bit of extra depth and also support. You can see there's uh, some there. And there's also some on the uh, 0.4 mil sheets. You just need to release them and glue them onto the side. I'll show you how they go once I've released them. Uh, they are very straightforward. There's just two little nails on these. Just takes a bit of cutting. I always like to wear them on the back as well as the front when I'm cutting the nerves out. Just make sure you get a clean edge as possible. And like I say, I do normally uh, like to file them down a bit. Uh, just with a very small file, uh, but I haven't brought that with me, so I'm afraid I don't have access to that. I also didn't bring my tweezers, so as you'll see later, I will be using a pair of scissors as tweezers, which probably isn't the best idea, but we have to make do with what we got, unfortunately. Okay, 
Yes, yeah, so that's the two shorter strengtheners released. Yeah, so we have got uh, Sam Jones on the questions as well, by the looks of it. So if anyone's got any questions for Sam, he should be able to answer if you if he wants, that is. Move now. How wide is the platform? Very good question. The platform is looks to be twenty one or twenty two mil wide. Looks like 22. I do apologise that it's quite hard to get the camera to show people. It's like around 22. I hope that helps. I do apologise it's a bit sniffly as well. I've got a bit of a hay fever at the moment. Uh, look, we're nearly there with the legs now. Just releasing them. Fortunately, it's one of the most time consuming parts of the build is actually releasing all the parts you need. But once it's done, it's done. You have to do it once. <laughs> there we go, so that's the point four, uh, point 0.4 mil sheet out now. So we can drop that away or put it in our spares box for later. Like I say, normally I would spend a bit of time just cleaning the parts up, but I'm not going to in this instance because I have the right tools and all the time. So we get the uh, main body stair pieces back again. There's two sides to each one, obviously, and you've got uh, four supports for each one. So you've got uh, one long and thin, and one short and thick part. <laughs> okay, so the short and thick part, if that's is your support there, you just simply glue it over the top. Of course, it's quite hard for me to demonstrate on camera, but the instructions do go for everything in quite good detail. So, super classic glue, hopefully not dried up, hopefully not going to run out, because I haven't got much left. Just a thin line over that. And then just line up as quickly as possible, pull the glue off. And there you go. That's one of the supports done. Quickly do a second one. A quick uh, second one just uh, runs up fully uh, diagonal of the stair. I'm trying to show you. There's a bit of delay in the uh, camera, so it's quite hard for me to figure out what you can see when I'm talking. But that just goes on there and slots in at the top there. So I'll quickly do that and I should be able to show you better once it's in place and be able to hold multiple things. Bit fiddly, but once it's in, it finds home quite nicely. <laughs> so I believe that's easier for you to see now. So you got the uh, thin piece of a diagonal there, which just slots in at the top and makes friends with the thick piece there. That just gives a bit extra support, a bit of extra detail. So I'll quickly do a second one for you. Just need to make sure as well. So you glue the side piece on and it leaves the little notches cut out of the steps there. You need to make sure that when you glue the second piece on, you've got notches on the opposing sides. So you'll be gluing the supports onto the outer side there. So that you've got the notches on the inside. So when you glue the steps in, everything marries up quite nicely. So measure twice, cut once, just make sure everything's in the right place. As Justin will tell you, that is one of my favourite sayings. Measure twice, cut once, put a 
course, it doesn't mean I'm any good at adhering to it. I'm one of the worst for rushing into things and then completely messing it up. Just quickly make sure that's gone in okay. It's all lined up. And then we'll just do the opposing support. Good to hear from you, David. Hope everything's okay in uh, Lancashire. Or as we call them in Yorkshire, the Badlands. But we'll uh, look over that for now. <laughs> Alan asks, does the glue nozzle come with the glue? And I'm afraid, Alan, I honestly do not know the answer to that question. Um, I believe it does. I think it does. But I, I wouldn't like to say for certain. Um, I believe that's a question that uh, Peaks 47, uh, Sam Jones, will be able to answer better than I can. Uh, but you can buy the nozzle separately. I know that for a fact. Because I have a pack at home. Okay, so now we've got the... Uh, the two sides, we're going to be gluing them into the two little notches there. One there, one there. Again, making sure that the, uh, the little slots are on the inside, sorry, the little slots are on the inside of the legs, just so everything lines up nicely. Okay, if I did bother, this could be quite hard to see, but hopefully you can see that okay. There's a little notch there, and it just slots in quite nicely. The beauty of laser cut materials and laser cut kits is everything everything goes together because we've designed it with a computer aided drawing. So in theory, everything should fit really nicely because we've done it to such precise measures. So making sure nodes are on the inside. Just tap that. Just going back to the Alan's question on the glues, we do recommend uh, rocket materials, oh, sorry, deluxe materials uh, glues for most of our products. They do a really nice laser cut kit glue as well, uh, which is a lot more viscous. Um, I have got a bottle at home of that, and it is better for this sort of thing. It's much more uh, precise, but unfortunately, I've kind of fallen out with my bottle because I found it way too easy to wear. Uh, block it up. I don't know if you were watching uh, Justin's live stream last time, uh, last week, but he gave a very good way of uh, making sure the nozzle doesn't uh, clog up and that's put it upside down in the cup with a wet, uh, a wet rag. Andy Hudson is, can you do with kitten O-gauge please Dylan? Okay Andy, um, I'm not sure if you heard my answer to the N-gauge question, but when people ask us about uh, can we do this in a different case? It's not always about sizing it up and scaling it up. It's also about the thickness of material. Um, and in quite a few instances, we don't have the material which is the correct thickness for the scale up size. Um, I'm thinking this is out of two mil MDF, so we do have some three and four mil MDF, which we may, which might work. Um, sorry, thought my glue was seized up then. I've just seen a legs fall on that, which I didn't notice. Um, but I imagine we could do a Sino gauge. But as usual, it's just a question of um, time, really, unfortunately. And I just realised I put it in the wrong one. There we go. So this is a little stair that I made earlier in true Blue Peter fashion. Um, but I'm not sure if I shot myself in the foot at all because I thought I'd get ahead of myself and glue some of the steps on, but now that means I've made it really hard for myself. Because now I've not only got to glue it in the tab, in the tab there, but I've also got to uh, get all the stairs lined up. I don't know if you can see that, there is a bit of delay in the camera for me, so I'm not too sure if you, if you can see everything I am doing, but let's imagine this is how not to do it. I thought I'll be clever and make it easy for myself, but I might have just made it really hard. I've lost the stair, in case anyone's noticed. One of them's just fallen out, so I need to glue that back in. 
Luckily, I use a sparing amount of glue because I'm really running low, but that doesn't mean you can't put more on. It's always better to use less than more, I find, with glues. Okay, so unfortunately, this could be a good way of demonstrating how not to do it. So I decided to glue the stairs on first to save time. But that has meant, or meant that I've now got a lot more fiddling about to do with it, and it might not look 100% unfortunately, but we'll soon see. Okay, so I think I kind of managed to rectify my mistake earlier. And this is another prime example of me deciding to uh, measure once and cut two times. This hasn't gone as far as bad. So I'll, 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 I'll leave the mistake, I'll uh, own up to it. What I've done is I decided to glue all the steps onto one half of the staircase first. Uh, normally, what you do is you glue the two halves of the staircase on. And then you fill the steps in, but what I, the way I've done it is the opposite way. So I glued all the steps on then to one half and then tried to put uh, the two parts together on the platform. But that's meant that the stairs don't quite align up. Um, I probably could make them align up, but that would mean spending hours and hours and hours fiddling around. And I really could do some tweezers for that, and I forgot to bring mine, so I'm using a pair of uh, primary school scissors, unfortunately, which isn't the best thing to use for this. But let's just make do with what we've got in the time, shall we? So that's kind of come together now. You can see what it should look like there. <laughs> yeah, Alec Ralph has just uh, echoed what I've just said there. But it is much easier to uh, put the steps in after you put the staircase in. Uh, but unfortunately, I do not. Um, I hindsight, I thought it would be easier and quicker for the, the video for me to put the staircase in first because the steps are really fiddly. <laughs> okay, so in in reality, I would like to have a pair of tweezers for this, but I don't have them, so I'm just going to use a pair of scissors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply small amounts of glue, in fact I did it this way, I tested one yesterday, I'm going to apply small amounts of glue to the inside notches on each side. This is where the, uh, the fine nozzle really comes into its own, because it's so fine you can get it wherever you want, and the laser cut kit glue is actually even finer, but unfortunately that does mean it's easy to uh, block up as I found to my expense. So I will have to put another order in for some more of that because I've buggered mine up, unfortunately. So the first step's always the hardest because the first step keeps everything apart, which makes the rest easier. And if I do, I'm not sure if you can see this or not. There we go. Right, that's the first step in. Okay, so uh, Sam Jones in the chat has just said glue is uh, £5.95 each, and then we do charge £3.50 postage on all orders under £50. And I do believe we do like to stock the uh, Lux materials, the Fatic, which is what I'm using now and recommend, uh, Rocket Card glue, which is better for your Rayboard Card uh, KX kits. And we also like to stock the Laser Cut kit glue. I believe it's more expensive, probably about six pounds something. If uh, Sam would just like to check that for me, um, but it is superior. The uh, laser cut to kit glue. Just make sure you keep them all blocked, or well, then it's uh, pretty useless if you don't, as I found out. Okay, so we're nearly there on the second step now. Just trying to get my own point. Okay, our second one done. Okay, 
really, really low on this uh, clip moment, so I really hope I don't run out, because that would be disastrous. We're not too far from completing the kit now, guys. All we need to do is add the last couple of steps, add the top piece, and then add the texture sheet. And then, of course, we've got the wires to do. Which I will admit to, I've just realised when you add the wires, it is much easier to do it before you put the steps in. Which is something I will admit I completely forgot about, but we might be able to get around it because we've uh, left that one step, so we've got a bit of a bigger gap to feed the wires through now. Um, but in the instructions, it does say to add the wires before the steps. That's something I completely forgot about, because of course I don't have any instructions in front of me because I am doing this as a live stream. So I thought it would look more professional without. But in the instructions it does say add the wires before the steps. And I bet a couple of you can see now why my favourite saying is measure twice and cut once. That's the second mistake I've made this morning on this one kit. And I've got no excuse really because I designed this kit and I built one yesterday. So I've got no excuse not to know how it goes together. Okay, so nearly those steps now. We've just got uh, two more. Typical bloke, yeah. <laughs> Instructions are for the weak. Or the smart. Okay, so nearly those steps now. Must admit, I do think the steps one of my favourite features of this kit. The uh, laser engraved tread plate does look really, really good. Uh, and once painted up and weathered, it can look amazing and really add an extra depth to detail in there as well. Didn't want to fill this one, didn't quite want to go, but there he is. He's in place now. We've got 220 people watching, so thank you everyone for uh, staying with me for this and having enough patience with me. Probably not as uh, glamorous as the boss when he does it. Okay, so someone's asked if a texture sheet comes with the kit, and it does. You get three texture sheets to come with the kit, and we only get the textures for the top piece. Um, once I've just glued this step in, I will show you. It's always the last one which decides to be a pain. But yeah, you get three textures for the top piece. Um, you get a pristine one, a lightly weathered one, and a heavily weathered one. Um, but of course, that doesn't mean you, can, you can't use your out. You can use um, whatever you like as a top piece, or you can even paint it. I don't really get along that well with uh, texture wraps. I prefer to paint my models, but for the sake of a live stream, we're going to be adding one today. And for some reason, this last step just won't go. Good enough. For some reason, it's always the last one. It's being a pain. So we're just going to pull that out. Completely. And there we go, it's back in. So that's all the steps now done. Uh, so John Slade asked if the steps are long enough to suit the signal box. Uh, honestly, that depends on the size of your signal box on that one. Um, but we do offer the steps as separate details packs and in separate uh, different sizes and so forth. Okay, so if someone asked about the texture sheets, you get three texture sheets per uh, kit. They're all the same, well, in each kit they're the same. We get a pristine, lightly weathered, and a heavy weathered version, just to give it a bit more variation. So if you have different ones of these, you can have different finishes in each one. But then, of course, you can also paint them as you wish. Okay, so now we're going to invite Captain Hindsight 
over and we're going to say that we really should have added the plant first because that is what it says in the instructions and that is something I missed off unfortunately under the pressure of the uh, live stream I was talking about the uh, pipes earlier so I'm not sure why I didn't remember okay, so you get two different sized wires uh, with a kit you get a one mil which is quite a thick uh, wire and you get 0.5 mil which is much more bendy uh, just to give it a bit more variation uh, okay so tony's asking if you can buy magnifying glasses which can uh, fit on your head and i believe you can um, from who i don't know that sounds like a product that uh, gauge master more than likely do um, or even oh, i'm trying to think of what, what the company's called now it's a backland company um I think called Model Maker or someone like that. Uh, they they do that sort of product. And I believe that's something they all do. So have a look at either Model Maker by Backman or Gauge Master, and that should uh, provide you what you want there. Don't you? So when you get the wires in the pack, there is a chance that they can be slightly bent as well. Hopefully you can see that it can be slightly bent, uh, just the way that the yeah, poster. So I just like to uh, put them against the steel rule or a ruler. And bend them straight. Just hold for a second. Bend it the other way a bit. And you've got a pretty much straight wire. Like I say though, you are meant to do this before. As you can see, I haven't got much room to add them in because of the steps in the way. So let's hope I can do this without messing things up. Yeah, Alan, she said, Elaine's, uh, Elaine's Emporium. That's always a very good shop to use for the uh, model makers among us. Um, they do a lot of extras, which can be very useful to a lot of us. Okay, so I'm just trying to feed these wires through. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to try and bother with them because I have messed it up and put the steps on first. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to show you what I did yesterday, last night, on the test build I did. The wires are really quite simple to feed through, actually, if you don't put the steps on first, that is. You must remember to don't put the steps on first. We just slide through. You might find you need a pair of pliers just to uh, feed them through at the end. But as you can see, they do look really good. And these are 1mm, they're 0.5mm. If you had lights or anything under here, then you can place these with real wire and then have them work into a prototypical effect and um, because of course that is what they were they were electrical cables they were uh, wire conduits um gas lines that sort of thing propane cutters um tinsley model railway or tinsley uh the real one's a great example to look at for what these were like underneath um so yeah if you wanted to have a look at some real real life examples of this then i recommend having a look at tinsley um so they had loads of these to be honest uh will point out as well in the wire that we supply unfortunately as you can see there isn't quite long enough uh for the whole length of the kit but we do supply enough wire to finish the whole kit so all you need to do is get a pair of wire cutters measure it to size so about there I should be able to actually show you this. This is the one I built yesterday, in case anyone's wondering. So you just feed the wire through the hole. Try and get it through the next one. There we go. It's always quite a fiddly job, this. It's not the best doing a live stream because it's quite hard to uh, get the camera in. To a point where you can see as well as uh, actually doing the job. There we go. So you fed your excess wire through just to finish off the lens. I'm not sure if you can see that because of the sunlight. But as you can see, you just feed it through so it meets the opposite end. And 
and you'd glue them together or you can push this one back so it's actually inside the hole and then with a bit of patience you can feed it through take your wire cutters and very carefully I'm just going to pull it out a bit so I get more wiggle room. Very carefully, just try and cut it like so. Okay, so that's now been cut to length. Now, for the real example, you would glue them together. So once you've done that with all of the wires, that is how the under underfly should work. And that would be really nice for you to practice weathering on as well. Because uh, of course in real life they would have got extremely dirty due to a very typical instance of where, of what materials they got covered in and caked in. So I'm just going to glue that last leg back on, it fell off at the start, no issue at all, just glue it back in place. A second to go off. And there we go. So that is how your top piece should work. So down there, now this is the 0.4mm laser board top piece. And that just glues on the top. Like that. And as you can see, it just gives it a clean finish. So this is really handy if anyone wants to uh, paint the top themselves rather than use the text sheet. But it gives you a nice clean finish. It saves you faffing around with polyfiller. Or anything like that. Uh, Steve Simmons, could you add uh, square blocks on the pipe work to uh, create junction boxes? Of course you can, this is a kit that you can really take to town on. Um, you can expand it any way you want, you can lengthen it, widen it, or you can add numerous amounts of details to the underside to create the kit you want. We always, at Scale Watching, we also like to provide uh, the basics and then encourage you yourself to uh, then detail it up and take it to how you want it to look and customize it yourself. So I'm just uh, liberally gluing the top piece. I guess the Barry Turner is going to work meeting at once, so uh, thanks for joining us, Barry, and we'll have a good day at work. We'll just glue the top piece on now, nice and simple. Just make sure it's flat in the corners. And there we go, that's the top piece on. So now all the last stops, uh, last stages is to firstly move excess materials out of the way that we don't need. Get the instructions that I failed to read in the first place. And now we need to release and cut out the text sheets of choice. Now I have a cutting skills of a five year old. So I hate using texture sheets personally, but I find the best way to release them is to line a nice steel ruler up the edge. Nice sharp blade, this is a nice one, a mortar and knife. It's one we currently stock and recommend to everyone. They are absolutely superb in my opinion. This one's getting a bit old now. I'm just replacing what this will do for this job. It's one of more than nice, that was really good, made in Sheffield as well, so it's always nice to support British businesses. I'm just going to take the least off of this. Not the most entertaining of uh, programs to watch, unfortunately. Me coming very, very close to cutting myself with a very sharp knife. But this is one of the uh, final details which really brings the whole kit together and really brings it alive. Just going to trim the end piece off a bit more to give it a nice clean edge. Just trim off the other side. Watching your fingers as you go.
And there we go. Just tidy it up as you go along. Quite hard for me to show you, but you can imagine when you cut paper, sometimes you get a few scraggly edges. So you can make sure like everything's looking clean. If anyone's got any questions, please do feel free to put them in the chat. Let's have a quick look. Just just came on saying he's doing well. It's always good to hear. I do need to get myself a longer ruler. Um, I'm actually shielding or uh, hiding out lockdown at my girlfriend's place, so I've brought as little stuff as possible, so I'm out of the way as possible. Um, so I brought my 15 centimeter rule rather than my 30 centimeter, just so it's easier uh, to hide away and keep out of her way. Okay, so we're pretty much done now. All we need to do is get a trusty frisk and wind it. We always like to recommend Prisic for uh, these. In fact, before we're going to do that, we're going to uh, learn from our lessons and measure twice before we cut. So I'm just going to see if this fits in nicely. I don't know if we need to trim any more off. Yep, to me that looks like a fit nicely. So we can put that aside for a second. Get the frizz stick, wind it up nice and high. Now, Justin will definitely tell you that I am not the best with uh, texture sheets. I've never really worked with them. I don't have much experience in them. I always prefer painting. But one thing I've learned from Ian, who is the complete opposite of me, he loves texture sheets, is that if you wind your print stick up all the way and use the very edge on the texture sheets, then you can get really far into the corners without splodging everywhere. Um, I mean, of course, that means you don't get the corners curling up and frailing up. Uh, so let's have a look at any more questions. So Philip Jackson says Swan and Morton play is definitely the best. They are good for delicate work. They are really good stuff. It's I believe everyone in the team uses them and really recommends them. They are quite nice and not so expensive as well. I'm not sure on the cost exactly, but they are nice and cheap and they last forever if you look after them. But they are very good at uh causing light and light, late night raids of the first aid kit, unfortunately, because they are very sharp. So I'm using a sparing amount of print stick, using the very edge of a fully wound stick, just to get as much coverage as I can, as lightly as I can as well. So I'm just going to lightly use the full face of the print stick just to even it out a bit. Okay, so we're nearly done. Last stage. It's going to line it up in one corner, press it down to go along, hopefully you can see this, press it all the way down, and just, good thing about this is it takes ages to get off really, you've got lots of working time with it, so you can really manipulate it as much as you want and make sure that it's looking nice and square. Okay, so that wasn't the best cutting by me. But of course, you can always do a better job than I have in cleaning parts up, which is a time issue. <laughs> Thanks for the kind words there, John. Much appreciated. And I hope you have a good day. Yeah, Alex says you use sticky label uh, texture sheets. That's not, I don't think that's something we really offer is uh, self-adhesive texture sheets, but we do exist in the real world. And they are ones you can use as an alternative. Of course, we like to recommend our own, but you can use the branded texture sheets if you want that maybe sticky labels. Okay, so last piece we need to do is uh, some little P-shaped handrails uh, on the, I believe it's one mil laser board piece. So we get our trusty Swan and Morton blade out again. Just release these, and these just go on the ends over the railings there. Let's go in those corners. Just round the whole build off, just to give it a bit of a more detail, a bit of a nicer look to it. These are quite tricky to uh, release. They are quite delicate and thin, but with a bit of patience, they should come clean out. So, one's gone already, and the other one's gone. Still have four to put on, and I'll do all four to give it the most rounded look possible. 
I do find when, when releasing um, kit parts, especially the finer stuff like these little P handles, it is always best. I'm sure Justin, Sam, Dylan, anyone, uh, not Dylan, I'm Dylan, uh, Ian, anyone who has, or anyone else who's got our kits will always tell you that it's best to use as minimal pressure as possible, as little force as possible, um, but just keep going over rather than heavy handed first time just so you don't accidentally tear the part or accidentally ruin it in any way. Okay, so David's got to go now. I uh, hope you have a good day. Uh, on the KX058, I believe uh, Ian is currently building the KX058 as a test build um, or as a demonstration, as a written demonstration rather than a live demonstration. Um, I believe he's doing one for the club now, which is railwaymodelers.co.com, uh, I believe. Um, so if you're interested in that, uh, that'll be live in the club in the probably week after next, I reckon. So I've released the uh, P parts now. I'm just going to get a tiny bit of glue. I'm going to glue a tiny bit down one of the edges. You only need a very minuscule amount. It's such a fine, fiddly piece. And hopefully, I'm going to glue it onto the inside of one of the handrails. But I am not known for my finesse at the smaller details. I'm a bit hand-fisted sometimes, so that could... Hopefully that looks okay. I imagine most of you We'll be able to do a much better job than I can. Okay, so next base, there are four of these. I'll quickly rattle through them just so you get an idea of how long it takes. I'm going to give you some different angles of how I'm doing it. So, a very, very, very fine amount of glue. What I was saying earlier as well about the, uh, the laser cut material, the MDF, with the uh, paints. That also applies to glue, unfortunately. If you use too much glue, uh, you do risk saturating the pieces since they are made of wood and are absorbent. Um, and if you saturate them, you can actually ruin the effect of them. So I've just dropped that there. Try and get that back on. Hopefully that's still got enough glue in there to glue it in piece. If someone's asked how do you recommend gluing this and attaching this to our baseboard so as you can see it is when it's got the uh, stairs on either side it has got some form of rigidity to the piece um but since the legs are singular single pronged rather than two pronged um i do recommend you uh, either use quite a strong glue to glue them in place or you can try and create a base part uh, just to give it a bit more surface area to uh, adhere to to your baseboard. But if it's if it's tucked away in the corner of your uh, diesel maintenance depot or something, uh, it's not really a corner you're moving about too much. And I should say, with a bit of glue, there's no reason why it shouldn't be fine on its own without creating a base for it. But if it's something that you're moving about quite a lot, I'd probably look at uh, getting something to help keep it in place. Yep, so if someone said we can leave the steps off one end and daisy chain them, that is very true. You can probably also do that for whips, uh, width, sorry. So if you're wanting one that's twice as thick, twice as wide, you can do that there. I'm just trying to glue one of the uh, P handles on. There we go, last one. Okay, so someone's saying the P-handles are not at right angle to the steps, uh, they follow the line of the handrail. Uh, no, they do go like that in the kit. So I can try and show you close up. Gluing's not the best on my half. Uh, they should be more vertical than that. But that's just I'm trying to do it quickly for the video. If you were doing this for your own now, you obviously you're taking more time over it. Uh, I imagine the majority of you are way more experienced than I am building kits i'm going to build a handful which is surprising uh, but they are meant to go on the ends at 90 degrees 
to the rest of the handrail like that. Just obviously, they're meant to look a bit better than what I've done. Um, and I've just had, there it is. One thing I do suffer from, apart from the uh, three instructions, is forgetting where I put something I had in my hand two minutes ago, which I'm sure most of us can uh, relate to there. Okay, so I think that is it. That is the complete build guide for the LX368. I get the uh, one I did yesterday up. You can see. So you can see they were not the uh, sturdiest things, but if you uh, had a dab of glue on them just to hold them in place, that should keep them in place nicely. So as you can see there, that's how it should look on your depot. Of course, you can have as many of these as you want, or as long as you want, uh, depending on the size of your layout. You'll have the tracks going in between the two, and then obviously any locomotive that comes into depot is up as a platform for workers to work on it. So I believe that is everything. Uh, anyone's got any questions, please do feel free to ask. Um, I would do the best to help out. Um, if you want to uh, send us an email, you can do, which is uh, help at scalemodelscene.co.uk. And then we'll do our best to get back to you by the end of the working day there and help out with any questions we've got. So thank you everyone for watching. Um, I hope everyone has a good day. I hope everyone stays safe during lockdown. And I hope everyone's got plenty of work to do on the model railway. Um, so yeah, thank you everyone for watching. Um, any questions, please do ask. And uh, have a good day now. So thank you everyone, and we'll see you later. Try now.